Hello everyone! In this video I'm going to show how you can install a web server and database server on your local device so you will have a local web stack running in the matter of minutes using the AMPPS, the AMPS software package. So we will install a Apache web server, PHP as a scripting language and MySQL as the database server. So you want to head over to ampps.com, um, it's or called like amps.com and just check out the download. It's free, it is available for macOS and Windows and we will go with the Windows version. After you have downloaded everything you will find a dot, an executable file say on your desktop or on your download folder wherever you have installed it or downloaded it to and then you have to start the installation process by double clicking on the executable file and it will welcome you to the AMP setup so you will hit next you will have to accept the agreement and it will usually be installed into C program files AMPs that is the default setup and you should leave it as that and create some icons if you want if you do not have Microsoft Visual C++ already installed, it will also come with this software package which is uh, needed for this software to run. All right, after you have launched your um, or completed the setup, you can launch the, the M software and it will prompt you with the installation of some apps uh, that we need because the AMPs is basically a container for other software. So we need PHP as a scripting language, MySQL as a server, PHP, Madmin, Apache. So you can just leave everything at is and hit continue. And then very important, you will be prompt a security alert on Windows um, where it will say like, okay, there is this software, uh, my C my SQL D, that's a daemon for the uh, MySQL server and it wants to open a port. So meaning that on your machine, there will be a network port available now, and this is a security risk. So you get this warning, but you have to check the boxes on, uh, if you don't do that, it will not work. So this is just your firewall uh, informing you that there is some software that will open a port. Since we know that this is a database server and the next one is a Apache web server, we know that's fine, so we will allow it. Okay, so hit the checkboxes, the same for the web server, and there you go. And now your services are running. And if you click on this small icon here, you will get to the web root folder. Just give me a second. Uh, here it is. I hit it again. You will uh, land in this folder. And as you can see, it's the program files, AMPs, www folder that is your the so-called web root folder so every script you have every HTML file that you want to deliver over your web server meaning you will be able to access this in the browser it has to be located within this very folder okay I also created one subfolder called it beer because we will have a small web application running in one minute and I also created a very, very basic index.html file. This file looks like this. It's very basic. It only has a heading, a paragraph, and the surrounding body and HTML tags. And if we access this file in our browser, we hit go to localhost and hit enter. And since we did not specify a file, I could do that as well, like index.html. You see, it's the same results. If you do not specify a file, the web server is configured in a way that it will search for an index file. And it's either an index.html or an index.php. PHP being a scripting language, okay? So your system is set up, it is running. And now we want to create our first web application. And for this purpose, I have um, the idea to create a small beer database. So we need to head over to the database admin panel. And this is located at localhost slash php my admin. 
written like that. Okay, wait, I have this in a big, bigger letter so you can see it. It's localhost slash php my admin. And the default user and password in AMS, when you have installed everything using AMS, will be root as the user and my SQL as the password. But this is only true if you have done this uh, with AMS, okay, like this software stack. If you have installed Apache MySQL Server PHP using XAM, for instance, it's another package, you will have a different password. So they are configured differently. So you need to find out what your configuration is. For AMS, like in this video, it is root and MySQL as the root password. Root is basically the the admin user and is allowed to do everything on this database server. Okay, so on the left we can see all databases running. It's four system databases. We will not look into those and not change anything and create a new one. Create database. I will call it beer database. And the char said we can leave just as the default value. It's, uh, yeah, meanwhile the most common one, UTF-8. Uh, MB4, so every, I don't know, every sign, every leather, every, every emoji is possible in this chart set. So let's create a database. Now this database is empty. It does not have any table in it yet. And now we could start to create our tables using this uh, graphical user interface here, this web application basically. Uh, but I decided to do it in a different way. I wrote some C my SQL code to create a table. Um, and we will create a table called beers. We will have a beer ID as a column, a beer name, alcohol level, description, beer style, country of origin, and so on. And beer ID should be the primary key, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All right. So, uh, so I'm just gonna go through the uh, SQL window and paste the command, and just hit go. And there you go. Our beer table has been created. Now this beer table has no data in it, so it's basically empty. And now we could start to insert some lines, some rows ourselves, but that is very tedious and boring. So I decided we could just ask ChatGPT. And I will give ChatGPT the code for my create table command. So it knows what um, columns I have, and then I will ask it create 20 entries, be creative and funny. So. Let's head over to ChatGPT and bam, just ask it to create some random data for us. I did that before, as you can see. Um, and I ask it to create, uh, I think, 20. Yeah. 20 rows as sample data and now we can just paste this right here and check it out sometimes it makes some errors because it adds some single quotes when it uses something like it's or yours and this will lead to an error but this time it looks good i'd say okay so we hit go and voila now our beer table or beers table is filled with 20 rows yeah, and we have some beer names, some imaginary alcohol levels, descriptions, beer style and the country of origin. American pale ale from Japan, the frothy ninja. <laughs> nice. Okay. The next thing we want to do is create a small web application that will read this very table and present it as HTML. And I also did that. So I have a small PHP script right here. It will just create some variables like the server we want to connect to the database server since it's running on this machine. It's the local host, username, password and the database. And um, then we will fire this MySQL select select everything from the beers table we will get a result set as a table back and then we will print out some html uh, like here's a table and here comes the first row the headings 
and when the actual data will come, the rows for the table, we will create a loop. We will loop through the result set, basically the table we get from the database. And for each row, we will glue together some HTML with the data from the database, like the beer ID, the beer name, etc. And if we do that and run to our browser and go to beer slash beers, because as you have seen, maybe I have put this file into a folder called beer and I call the file beers.php. This is this file here, okay? So, and this script I will now access in the browser. So it will be sent to the PHP interpreter and the PHP interpreter will create the HTML. And there you go. So your first web application running in the matter of minutes. And now you can go and, well, create new folders, write your own scripts. Yeah, do whatever you want and have fun developing web applications.